ಓಂ ಜನನೀ ಸಾರದಾ ದೇವಿ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಪಾದಪದ್ಮೇ ತಯೋ ಶ್ರಿತ್ವಾ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಮುಹುರ್ ಮುಹು ವಿ ವರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ವರ್ಸೇಷನ್ ದಟ್ ಟುಕ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಶ್ರೀಮಾ ಶಾರದಾ ದೇವಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿರೋದ್ ಬಾಲಾ ರಾಯ್ ಹೂ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ವಿಡೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿ ವಾಸ್ ಹೋಲಿ ಮದರ್ ಲವ್ಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿ ವಾಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ವಂಡರಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ದೋಸ್ ಡೇಸ್ ವಿಡೋಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ನೋ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ಕಮ್ ಸೊ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲಿ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಲಿಟಲ್ ವೆರಿ ಫ್ಯೂ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೊರ್ ಓವರ್ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ದಟ್ ಶಿ ಡಿಂಟ್ ಫೀಲ್ ದಟ್ ಶಿ ನೀಡೆಡ್ ಟು ಹೋಲ್ಡ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಬಟ್ ಸಮಾವ್ ಹೋಲಿ ಮದರ್ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ನೋ ದಟ್ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಬ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಕೆಟ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ವಿಂಟರ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟೂ ಬ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಕೆಟ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಬಟ್ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಬ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಕೆಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಶಿ ವಾಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸೊ ಹೋಲಿ ಮದರ್ ಟೆಲ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ದಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ದ ಬ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಬ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಕೆಟ್ ಆರ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಬೈ ಎ ಬ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಕೆಟ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೀಡ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಬ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಕೆಟ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟಾಕ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಬಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಗಿವ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಶಿರೋದ್ ಬಾಲಾ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಶಿ ಡಸ್ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಬ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಕೆಟ್ ಸೊ ಶಿರೋದ್ ಬಾಲಾ ಇಸ್ ಓವರ್ವೆಲ್ಮ್ಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಶಿ ಶಿ ಡಸ್ ಶಿ ಫೇಲ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಹೋಲಿ ಮದರ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹರ್ ಪಾವರ್ಟಿ ಸೊ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ವಾಸ್ ಹಿಡನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹೋಲಿ ಮದರ್ ಸೊ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ neither about her sari she says she has only one or two sarees and one blanket so if you have if you have bought it then we'll give it to her so how she is writing now shirod bala roy is writing how many times she made me understand that she was truly our mother discarding her physical body the mother is now bestowing her blessings even more whoever calls upon her the indwelling mother approaches him and settles all his problem now this is written 10 years after uh, i think this was recorded much later after the mahasamadhi of holy mother so she says formerly one had to make various arrangements to see her now after the passing away of uh, after the mahasamadhi of holy mother sitting at one place if someone applies sincerely one's heart one can find the mother when her disciples are in trouble she comes on her own protect and protects them i have heard many such anecdotes so she is now relating a few anecdotes where it was proved beyond doubt that holy mother still exists even after giving up her body in mahasamadhi she is still there she is still the divine mother who comes to your help whenever you sincerely pray to her so she is narrating the first incident once i came from my native place to calcutta on saptami day the first day of durga puja i was keeping rather poor health this is what shirod bala is writing her reminiscences and was running a temperature intending to worship mother with temperature on i went to her carrying some select flowers a few days ago revered swami premanand maharaj had passed away premanand ji was passed away before holy mother passed away and she was very much upset she was, she uh, knew that he was sick he was suffering from uh, some strange kind of fever which was not leaving him it was known as kala azar that is the disease with which he was suffering so uh, he had passed away a few days ago and that year durga puja was suspended at belur math because swami premanand ji was the central figure he was like the manager of belur math and in his absence and it was just a few days before durga puja he passed away so <clears throat> durga puja was however being held at the monastery in varanasi uh, though belur math did not hold it those days there were only a few centers when holy mother was alive uh, later on uh, so there the centers started increasing but belur math banaras mayavati advait ashram and a few handful of centers were there madras math which shashi maharaj had 
started. So, uh, Shirod Bala approaches Holy Mother. I approached the mother and worshipped her because it was Durga Puja. She, uh, Shirod Bala thought it's a good opportunity to, since Durga Puja is not being held, why not worship the mother here? As her I worship means it was a simple worship. She would have brought some flowers, Ganga Jal, and just offered it. That would be worship for them. As her eyes fell on me, she lamented and saying, Ah, you look so much pulled down, my child. Then she mourned for Premananda Maharaj too, and she continued, You should leave for Varanasi this very night. Some sannyasin and brahmacharins of this place are going to Varanasi. Your health is very much down. Stay at Varanasi for about a month. So Shirod Bala replied, What's the use of going there? I love to stay here. The mother said, What do you say? Varanasi is the abode of Lord Vishwanath. I said, This is the abode of Annapurna. I mean, Holy Mother is referring to Holy Mother because Varanasi is supposed to be the abode of both Vishwanath and Annapurna. But Shirod Bala says, This is the abode of Annapurna. And Mother laughed and said, Nevertheless, you will come round if you stay there for some days. Now, whatever it may be, you go there, stay there and your health will improve. So now she had brought some, I had brought with me some pickle of tamarind from my native place for presenting to the mother. Seeing a big crowd at mother's house, I wondered where I should place it and whether it could be of any use to the mother. The mother, the indwelling spirit of my being, called Gulapma and said, keep this pickle with care. I shall take it later. Give my daughter some fruits for her consumption during her journey. So she was insistent that Shirod Bala went to Banaras because there was no puja at Belurmat, but there was puja at Varanasi. I received them. We left for Varanasi. There was a big group, some sannyasins and brahmacharins who were to assist the Durga Puja celebrations in Banaras. They were going, so she asked Shirod Bala to join them and go there. Varanasi was in the grip of a virulent kind of influenza. Flu was going on there. As soon as the monks there saw me, they said to me, Now the attack of influenza is so devastating here that you, instead of regaining your health, are very likely to contract influenza and suffer. I kept quite thinking, Come what may, I shall stay here. For I have come on the advice of mother. So what can happen to me? Nalini Didi and a few others who had accompanied me left Varanasi just after puja. But I continued to stay there. I stayed in Rana Mahal. Some, day later, some days later, I contracted influenza. Then the monks helped me much by sending a physician for me and providing medicines. One day I saw Holy Mother appear before me in a dream. She was alive. She was in Udbodhan, but she was not present here. But she appeared to Shirod Bala in a dream and said, There is nothing to fear. I am here. I shall take care of you. Next day, my illness took a turn for the better and I came around, came around in a few days' time. As soon as I had completed one month in Varanasi, I returned to Calcutta. On seeing me, the mother said smilingly, It is such a big relief to me, dear. I sent you to Varanasi for your good, but the illness you contacted there was about to harm you. That means somehow Holy Mother came to know that she is ill, so she appeared in a dream and in a subtle way protected her from, uh, uh, from that influenza, which in those days, influenza could be very fatal. Now, this is the end of the conversation of Shirod Bala Roy, or reminiscences, we can say, so her memories of Holy Mother, which were recorded. But now we come, we, we will be reading the reminiscences, which were recorded by Swami Shantanandji. Shantanandji was a disciple of Holy Mother and very close to the mother and finally he was 
he retired early because he contracted uh, tuberculosis and he was in rachi sanatorium for some time uh, where tb patients were normally kept but then after recovery he came and stayed at belur math but he was retired and a very very loving soul very calm just as his name suggests his name was shantananda one was full of peace always full of peace so now he is uh, recording some i mean he has recorded some reminiscences of mother i asked the holy mother shantanand ji is saying how shall i lead a spiritual life mother she said spend just spend your days as you are doing now just pray to him earnestly and remember him always so this is a very simple but very powerful advice because she said the simplest and the best way the best and the simplest way to easiest way to solve the problems of life is to remember your ishta sri ramakrishna in silence so anyway he was a very silent monk so she said spend your days as you are doing now and pray to him earnestly and remember him always this is the promise given by shri krishna in bhagavad gita also do whatever remember me and fight just remember as try to remember me as far as possible if you remember me always that is fine even while doing things and pray to him earnestly whenever you get a chance you pray to him earnestly but the disciple says mother the fact that even great men became become degraded frightens me terribly so santanj is aware that the spiritual life is not such a easy thing so he is asking this question so when a person has enjoyable things all around him they, their influence naturally affects him so that's why <coughs> the, but the disciple says yes that is true but men cannot do anything on their own it is he who is making them do all that they do so he means now slowly like thakur's famous parable when the cow came and eat ate the plants the gardener instead of taking the blame that he could not protect his plants he just blame decided it is indra who did it because indra is the uh, deity and he came and destroyed me so everybody wants to blame god for all the misfortune so here hinting somewhat hinting at that uh, idea men cannot do anything on their own as you said no matter how much you try uh, it is only by his grace everything will happen it is who he who is making them do all that is do all that they do mother says true it is true that he is causing to do men to do everything but do they have that understanding being filled with ego they think they are the doers of everything and they don't have to even depend on god those who rely on him totally are protected by him from all dangers so she says though it is true but it would not it is not enough if one whole hearted it un, uh, if if one does it whole heartedly then one will get the results otherwise if one does not depend on god whole heartedly then the egoism the egotism which a person has that will cause a lot of suffering and terrible suffering in their life then pointing pointing to a monk he the monk mother continued the master used to say o oh monk beware a monk has to be always on the alert he should be cautious all the time a monk's path is very slippery it is like walking along a slippery path one has to move very cautiously but the ochre cloth of a monk protects him as does the collar on a dog no one hurts such a dog for they know it has a master so at the same time she says it's for this reason perhaps the ochre cloth is worn by the tradition says that you wore a or wear a ochre cloth just as in india there of course in the west uh, all the 
the most of the dogs are having a collar but in india there are lot of stray dogs as well so naturally if a dog is stray it has no protection whereas if it has a collar and even if it has escaped from home people will not hurt that because hurt that dog because they know somebody inadvertently has uh, the dog has escaped and uh, the collar reminds them that it belongs to somebody and he may be in searching for that so similarly they say that ochre robes of the monk protects him wherever he goes then she says her gives her own example a man's mind naturally runs after bad things if he wants to act virtuously the mind fails to cooperate in earlier days giving her own example she says i used to leave my bed at 3 o'clock in the morning to meditate one day i felt unwell and out of laziness i dispensed with my meditation because of this my meditation was stopped for a few days therefore if one wants to achieve something noble he must be sincerely ardous and seized with a firm resolve when i used to stay at in the nahabat on moonlit nights i would look at the reflection of the moon in the still waters of the ganges weeping and praying to god and how she used to pray this is such a wonderful prayer she says there are stains even on the moon but let my mind be absolutely stainless during my stay there the master forbade even ramlal to see me although he was a navy nowadays i talk with all and come out in the presence of others you are a calcutta boy had you so desired you she is telling shantananda he is telling shantananda ji was uh, her disciple you are a calcutta boy had you so desired you could have married and led a householder's life since you have renounced everything why should you give your mind to it again should one again take in the spittle that has been once spat out disciple now shantan ji asking her mother is it good to practice asanas pranayama and other exercises mother says asanas and pranayama endo one with occult powers and these may lead a man astray disciple is it good for a monk to go to places of pilgrimage then mother gives the answer if one's mind is at rest in a particular place then what need is there to go to places of pilgrimage then shantananda ji asks mother i don't even have time for meditation kindly make my kundalini awaken mother said mother says it will certainly awaken a little japa and meditation will awaken it does it wake up on its own do japa and meditation the practice of meditation will lead your mind to such one pointedness that you won't like to give up meditation but when you do not achieve such concentration of mind don't force yourself to meditation on such occasions finish your spiritual practice by simply saluting the lord the day on which you have the right mood you will have meditation spontaneously now the conversation is recorded on 19 june by santanand ji only it is on 19 june 1912 disciple mother why is it that my mind does not become steady when i try to think of god i find it drawn to various worldly objects mother says yes it is harmful if the mind is drawn to worldly objects like money and members of one's family nevertheless nonetheless the mind dwells naturally on one's daily activities if you don't succeed in meditation practice japa japa leads to perfection so i think this advice shantanand ji followed to the letter to the last letter japa siddhi so he was always muttering his lips were moving as if he was uttering the japa just through repetition of japa he achieved everything so he says if you don't succeed in meditation don't worry do japa 
if meditative mood sets in well and good if not don't force your mind to meditate so she was against using any kind of force and trying to empty the mind or meditate deeply if it is not possible if it causes a strain it is better to avoid it but she didn't ask us to stop japa that can go on it leads to perfection slowly but surely it transforms the human personality the inner personality the causal body which uh, which which houses our samskaras samskaras which are known as kleshas in patanjali's yog sutra so this raga dvesha and other things they are not easy to go but japa can reduce their effect definitely it can reduce its intensity and klesha tanu karana which we discussed in our rajoga class on friday that will take place now on another day shantanji is asking for practicing spiritual disciplines in varanasi should one live in a monastery or on some lonely place mother says if you practice spiritual discipline for some time in a solitary place like rishikesh you will find that your mind has gained enough strength and that you can live in any place or in the company of anyone without being least affected by it a sampling must be protected by a fence all around but when it grows big not even cows and goats can injure it spiritual practice in a solitary place is essential when worldly thoughts crop up in your mind and they possess it then you should go away from the company of others and pray to him with tears in your eyes he will remove all the dross of your mind and will also give you understanding so these are the solutions he gave to very simple solutions but we believe that shantanand ji must have taken everything seriously his life demonstrates that through this japa and japa alone without any complicated sadhana he could achieve the goal his goal of life a disciple says now he is showing his helplessness i don't have enough strength for doing spiritual disciplines you see he was i think even in those days suffering from uh, breathing problems and because of his tuberculosis so then he says i have surrendered myself at your holy feet please do as you will with folded palms the mother began praying to the master you see mother is praying for shantanand ji may the master protect you in your vows of sanyasa he is looking after you and what should you be afraid of if the mind is kept engaged in some work it doesn't indulge in silly thoughts but if you sit idle the mind is likely to indulge in various kinds of thoughts then the disciple asks how and where should i perform spiritual disciplines so mother immediately says in this particular case not that she would have told this to everybody she says in your case varanasi is the place suitable for you spiritual discipline means holding the mind steadfast at his holy feet all the time and immersing the mind in thoughts of him whether you are doing japa whether you are singing about him whether you are reading his divine play or the divine messages of sri ramakrishna that is how we keep our mind engaged as far as possible immersed in him manmayi bhava mad bhakta madhya ji maam namaskuru so Sri Krishna says, <clears throat> "Remember me. Do all work for me. Just keep me at the center of your being. In the center of your being. Imagine that I am in the heart, uh, sit, seated and guiding you. That is what the Lord says. I am sitting in the cave cavity of your heart, the center of your spiritual heart, and inspiring you. Even if you don't know." what you are doing if you dedicate everything to me i will give you the right understanding if if you focus on uh, your istain within the heart and immerse the mind in thoughts of him 
Then he says, repeat his name. Again, she says, repeat his name. Then the disciple asks, what can repetition of his name achieve if it is not attended with earnestness? Sometimes he says, it becomes very mechanical. What can I do? I can't do it with earnestness all the time. Now and then I do it, it's okay. But if I can't do it all the time, what is the use? What can it achieve for me? Holy Mother says, regardless of whether you get into water willingly or are pushed, the clothes will be soaked. Your clothes will be soaked. Practice meditation regularly or japa for your mind is still unripe. After prolonged practice of meditation, your mind will become steady. And you should constantly discriminate between the real and the unreal. That is the real, the permanent and the transient. Know the worldly objects to which your mind is drawn to be temporary. They are not permanent or maybe they are unreal. And surrender your mind to God. Then he, she gives an example which Thakur used to very often give. Holy Mother says, A man was angling in a pond all by himself when a bridegroom's procession with its all its music passed by. But he did not divert his attention. He was, his eyes remained fixed on the float, just waiting, when will, my, when will I catch the fish? I have to just pull the line. So he was just focused on that all the drama that is going on near him did not even bother him. He did not even care for it. Then the disciple asks, what is the aim of life, mother? Mother says, you see such a beautiful answer she gives. Simple but beautiful. The aim of life is to realize God and remain immersed in his contemplation and the contemplation of his holy feet always. You monks belong to the master. He is watching over your earthly life as well as your life to come. What worry do you have? Can you, anyone think of God all the time? It's not possible. Spend some time relaxing and some time absorbed in thoughts of Him. Then Mother says, continues, A monk must be free from anger and hatred. He must tolerate everything. The Master used to tell Riday, because Ridha and he were living together for a long time. And especially when Sri Ramakrishna was getting all these high spiritual states, he needed somebody who could look after him. So Ridha did a very good job. So he knew that Ridha is dependent on him and he is also as much dependent on Ridha for his physical needs. So he says, you will bear with my words and I shall bear with yours. Then only we can satisfactorily pull on. Otherwise, the cashier of the temple estate may have to be called for settling our disputes. So he's giving a hint to Riday that when you live together with somebody, then you have to adjust, you have to somehow tolerate each other or accept each other. You have to bear with my words. Sometimes inadvertently you say something, but where will you go? Because the Otherwise, a third person has to call, be called for settling our disputes. Then mother says, the master used to tell me, it's very important. You see, even mother who was restricted into in the Nahabat, in fact, she developed her knee pain. She had rheumatism because she was sitting all the time. Hardly she could move out of the Nahabat. But the master was so he noticed everything. He said, Master used to tell me, that is Holy Mother is saying, take short walks. Otherwise, you will not be able to maintain your health. In those days, Mother says, I lived in the Nahabat. I used to bathe in the Ganges at 4 o'clock in the morning and would then enter the Nahabat, not to come out of it again during the daytime. One day, the Master said to me, today, a Bhairavi will come. Dye a cloth and keep it ready. I have to give it to her. The Bhairavi arrived that day when the worship of Mother Kali was over. The master began to chat with her on various topics. She was a little hot-headed. She used to boss over me always. She would tell me at times, 
यू मस्ट कीप पाता भात फॉर मी पाता भात अदरवाइज आई विल पियर्स यू विद माई ट्राइडेंट नाउ दिस भैरवी वॉज भैरवी ब्राह्मणी शी वॉज ए लिटल बॉसी टाइप एंड अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग वुमन बट शी वॉज ए ग्रेट साधिका एज वेल शी टॉट श्री राम कृष्ण ऑल द साधना अकॉर्डिंग टू द वैष्णवा एंड शैव एंड द शाक्त तंत्र सो शी वॉज she was deeply concerned about sri ram krishna's welfare and sometimes and for people who do lot of sadhana pata bhat means it is rice which is stored in water overnight and in the morning that rice normally people of west bengal take it's known as pata bhat means that rice seems to cool down the whole system and she used to always insist that little of that should be kept for her and if for some reason mother forget forgot the, she would warn her put some kind of fright in her said i'll pierce you with my trident that's the language she used but she was a nice uh, i mean a well very well read in scriptures and lot of vairagya she was moving ar- around alone uh, all over india but the master would reassure me saying oh you don't have to fear she is a true bhairavi bhairavis are supposed to be bhairavas and bhairavis they are supposed to be guardians of shiva they live with him in kailasha so the, even in banaras before entering banaras you have to go to kal bhairava temple and first worship him before even going to the shiva temple so that's why he says don't worry she is a little hot headed because they are the official guards of shiva so they have to have a militant attitude she says sometimes she brought such a large quantity of arms that it would last for 7 or 8 days even at this the can cashier of the temple estate would say mother why do you go out and beg your food you can get it free here so she was very strict about her rules she used to go for begging and seeing her trident and but uh, <clears throat> fearful and dominant figure naturally everybody would give her bhiksha and she used to bring that food and then cook it herself the temple priest said why do you do it you are anyway staying here we will give you the food we are preparing everything the bhairavi would rep- reply you are my kala nemi uncle can i rely rely on you kala nemi is a character who was Uh, a very brutal king and a brutal uh, character in mythology so you may be my uncle but um, you are like this i do i can't rely on you then the mother continued during the years of his spiritual practices the ma- master would shrink through fear at the sight of various objects of temptation he would shun all these allurements one day in the panchavati grove he saw a boy approaching him this started him thinking what is this the divine mother explained to him that a shepherd boy of braja braja is the place where sri krishna did his leela would join him as his spiritual son when rakhal came the master said my dear shepherd boy has come tell me what your name is rakhal he replied then the master remarked yes yes that's right this was exactly in keeping with what he saw at the panchvati grove panchvati tree under the panchvati tree a uh, hazra told the master once why do you think so much of about this narendra rakhal and others why don't you immerse your mind in thoughts of god all the time this hazra was very fond of advising others he himself has esca- had escaped all the responsibilities of looking after his family which was done by his father by his father in law the family and the children they were with the father in law's house they had nowhere else to go and this fellow had left his house and was staying here so he is trying to advise thakur who was a master of renunciation who had renounced everything had no no family and all those things this person with a huge family and having run away is trying to impress upon thakur that you are attached to all this narendra rakhal and all you see i have left everybody and come 
you should immerse your mind in thoughts of god all the time but the master knew his nature then he says all right all right i'll keep my mind immersed in god thakur was absolutely egoless he, he did not retort or he did not scold him he knew as these such people have been kept here by the divine mother herself so let them be let them have their own view why should i interfere saying this he went into samadhi and his hair stood on end that is what happens when you go into samadhi a great ecstasy comes over the body and the hair as it were stands on the end and you become a totally different person so he continued in that state master continued in that state for nearly an hour then ramlal began to utter the names of various gods and goddesses this was actually told by sri ram krishna to haridai and whoever was around whenever they saw him in samadhi and if it continued for a long time he would ask them he had already given them a few names of the lord and various gods and goddesses and keep repeating them till he came back to consciousness the reason being is he he worshiped so many gods for him all gods were manifestations of the same divine so one does not know in which mood he was before he went into samadhi if he had gone into samadhi by meditating on krishna then perhaps they have to repeat the krishna mantra but since they did not know what had occurred before he went into samadhi he they would utter the various names whatever names he had given at least one of them will bring him back to normal consciousness after this after he had done ramlal had done this for a very very long time once he was in such a deep state of samadhi no matter how much he repeated the divine name he came back and regained his body consciousness when his samadhi had passed he remarked to ramlal did you notice the mental state into which i enter whenever my mind dwells on god that is why i keep my mind at a lower level by thinking of narendra and others ramlal said no please continue to stay in your own mood i don't want to know all these things you do whatever you like you stay in that mood if you like then this was explained by holy mother to shantanand ji she gave so many hints like what happened and what was narrated to her and this is how she came to know because holy mother was not there when these incidents were happening now then the disciple shantanand ji is again asking a question i am practicing a few breathing exercises should i continue then you must remember that he had asked this question and mother had said you don't have to do pranayama or uh, asanas or yoga you don't have to do any such thing it is enough if you repeat the name of god but mother now becomes a little relaxed she says okay you may practice them a little but it is not safe to do them for very long for it may throw you off your balance what need is there of breathing exercises if your mind becomes concentrated on its own so breathing was primarily done in patanjali raj yoga asana as well as pranayama was to give some kind of mental balance to the mind it helps definitely it helps but beyond that it cannot achieve anything so but she says what is the need of breathing exercises if your mind becomes concentrated on its own so there is no need for that then the disciple again asks a question about kundalini he says unless the kundalini is aroused nothing worthwhile can be achieved that is what perhaps he had read in a book because it was sri ram krishna who could give the experience of the rise of kundalini otherwise many people used to come with hallucinations that they had a rise in kundalini so he used to emphasize that first follow the disciplines first follow a pure life try to do japa try to meditate as much as possible after that after a long time your samskaras or your kleshas will become powerless then the divine will manifest then you don't have to do anything it will be spontaneous 
the kundalini also will away mother says certainly it will away repetition of his name will lead you to that goal even when your mind does not become concentrate concentrated you can repeat the holy name thousands of times one hears the anahata dhvani prior to the rousing of kundalini but this is not possible without the grace of the divine mother once somebody asked shantanand ji are you able to hear the anahata dhvani because that is what was recorded here and he said yes i do i do hear the anahata dhvani because without that anahata means unstruck sound a sound is normally made when you strike some table or chair or anything any object two objects clashing with each other gives rise to sound that is all we know about sound but this anahata dhvani as opposed to the common dhvani there are various types of i mean dhvani one is a ahata dhvani which is a spoken word or a spoken musical instrument all can produce dhvani but anahata dhvani means that which is produced even without any kind of friction without any kind of motion so you experience that only when the kundalini is about to rise so before that it is not possible to hear or experience that kind of peace or have some kind of god realization or, or real god realization till all these kleshas are subsided or subdued tanukarana as it is known then the mother continues in the early hours of the morning i was musing i was thinking that i would be able to see the lord vishwa see lord vishwanath it was a tiny emblem of shiva covered all over with bilwa leaves and water to such an extent that one can hardly see it as i was thinking this way all of a sudden there appeared a jet black stone emblem of shiva vishwanath himself vishwanath is quite big it's not the small emblem i saw natis mother run her fingers over the head of shiva i too quickly came and put my hand on shiva's head so now head in the sense the shiva linga at vishwanath now this was the experience holy mother had and she saw that first she thought what is this how am i seeing this and uh, uh, he i have seen i'm seeing something strange he is covered with lot of bilwa leaves so then she suddenly realized and tried to put her hands uh, on shiva's head means on the shivalinga that's the idea then disciple says mother i don't like the stone emblem of shiva anymore mother says how is that my son how many great sinners have come to varanasi and got emancipation by touching lord vishwanath he is accepting the sins of all with perfect composure whatever be the stone whatever the stone may look like but that has the capacity this powder has the capacity or uh, no, not this uh, uh, this stone or not powder this big stone has the capacity to absorb uh, though we think it is an inanimate object it has the capacity to accept everybody since then he, he says when people keep come here on weekends and salute me i feel a burning sensation now it's the stone has that capacity because the pran pratishtha has been done and it is the cosmic lord who absorbs all the karma of people who really worship him if one is very eager but for a living being when he incarnates for a stone symbol it is possible for millions of years the shivalinga would for thousands of years at least the shivalinga would have so many people who had committed sin would have touched it but nothing has happened the the stone emblem since it is directly connected through pran pratishtha to the divine vishwanath shiva himself then there is no problem but for holy mother as we discussed in the great master that when they take birth they have to suffer all the problems when when you take up a body so she was feeling terrible burning sensation if somebody impure touched her 
Only after I wash my feet with Ganges water, I can be at peace again. Then again the disciple asks, this doubt is not going at all. He says, if the Lord is the father and mother of all, why does he induce people to commit sins? Now, this is, he is asked in a slightly different way. But see the mother's wonderful answer. She says, true it is that he has become all the living beings. But everybody reaps the fruit of his actions according to his own past impressions and deeds. That is why we have to be careful. Otherwise, if we don't, are not very particular about the deeds or the actions that we do, then we have to bear the consequences of that. So, no doubt, the sun is one, Holy Mother says, but its shining varies according to the place and the object it illumines. Now, if we are pure, then more of spirituality will be radiated by the deity through me. But if I am impure, then the divinity is the same or the power, the spiritual power is the same. But unfortunately, it gets blocked. It does not find an outlet and one suffers. So, Mother says, the sun is one, but at different places, the higher you go, the more bright it will be and the more sunshine you will get. So, the, its shining of that sun will vary according to the place and the object it illuminates. In fact, it depends totally on the object that it illuminates. If our mind is full of impurity, then how can it object? It will not be opaque. It will not be transparent. It will be opaque. So if an opaque object is there, if there is the slightest pollution in our mind, then the opacity will increase. Lights, the divine light, if we compare our mind with uh, an opaque object, a glass, which is opaque, then there may be light and you may get some light. But if it is transparent, then you get the full light. That is what Holy Mother says. Don't blame the Lord. You just go on doing and try to rem remove the opacity of your glass. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the glass. Then the sun will shine. The sun of Atman or the sun of Brahman will shine powerfully through your personality. But unfortunately, the glass is dirty. So the sun rays can't penetrate and you can't have the desired goal. Then finally, we'll conclude now. Yeah, now it is 1st January 1917 and the conversation will go on. Shantananji is asking so many questions. He was very young, one should remember that. Later on when he became senior or he retired, he was such a calm and composed monk that one could see that he is literally following what Holy Mother told him to do. Silently doing japa, living in one's own world, but at the same time, meeting people, innumerable people used to come and meet him and ask him or just bathe in his wonderful spiritual presence. So let me see if there are some questions. I'll just, yeah. Tomorrow morning there will be a recording at 9.30 and our Nehru Center, which comes under the High Commission of India, uh, there will be a question-answer session for about one hour. So, um, of course, our class will continue as usual. This one hour question-answer question will be conducted by a famous author who will be asking questions and I'll be answering on the relevance of Swami Vivekananda to the youth, not only Indian youth, but the youth all over the world. So I told him <clears throat> that it may be difficult if you ask because Indian youth requires some kind of nationalism. That is typical for Indian youth. But for the world youth, nationalism or nationalistic ideas uh, which Indian youth need to love their country, to love their civilization, culture, may not apply so much to a Western youth. So we'll be speaking about on various topics, 
dealing with youth, including uh, how youth can be empowered, what is the best way to get spiritually empowered, and also the role of women. Because when you say youth, it doesn't mean boys only. So what is the role of a woman in this, uh, especially young women in this um, global, what is their responsibility uh, as representations of Prakriti? In fact, all of us are representations of Prakriti. But a, a woman it has a special uh, closeness, you may say, with the entire concept of Prakriti. So when you say nature and trying to, which is always referred to in the feminine, it, it means a lot. Nature is connected with the Divine Mother and she is Prakriti herself. Purusha is definitely the consciousness behind all that we do. Prakriti is helpless without him. But she creates and she does with his power, his power of illumination. So as Mother said, the sun is one but its shining varies according to the place and object it illumines. So we will be discussing that topic also. Ki how in one's life, if we say that women want to be empowered, then they have to be spiritually empowered. Just as it's not a monopoly of men. So once spiritual equality comes, once spiritual empowerment comes to a woman, then her empowerment is complete. Just socio-economic empowerment, political status and all those things will not help. They may be very dynamic women, but is she spiritual? So the spirituality will determine whether a woman is really empowered like that of like Sri Ma Sharda Devi or the Holy Mother. You see the amount of empowerment. We'll be discussing that and we'll be discussing some other women also. Women disciples of Swamiji and Thakur who, who showed what true women's empowerment is. So I'll take your leave. I hope there are no questions. There seems to be one question and I'll just yeah. So uh, one young girl is asking mothers do not keep well before her children. Yes, that is true because she doesn't feel when senior people are there in those days, she used to keep a veil. And, but there were some people who were childlike, like Latu Maharaj. And there were some others with whom she was very free. So she did not always keep the veil. But modesty is a great quality. Don't think it is a weakness. Modesty is a great quality. That is something which nature has endowed a woman with. Holy Mother herself says, uh, when some of the women were uh, recklessly dressing in a strange way, she said, what is this? You don't know modesty is the ornament of a woman. So if she loses her modesty, then she loses everything. So naturally, uh, she has to be, she used a veil for most of the time, but with her children, she did not use it. Now, Swamiji, because of job or personal reason, if someone cannot continue meditation on certain time, it's okay. Holy Mother never said you have to. She said whenever you get time. and But one, one has to have that feeling that as soon as I'm free, I should do some japa or meditation. It's not that you have to do it every day at the same time. If it is possible, it is fine. But if it is not possible, Whenever you get a good mood, whenever you are in a good mood, why don't you just close your eyes and meditate? There's no fixed time. You can do at any time of the day. You can do in any position, lying down. If you're tired, you lie down. But why don't you, why do? Why can't we uh, just repeat to japa at least, if not meditation? The idea is in all circumstances, in all the conditions, you can do it. Now, one more question and we will... Uh, finish, yeah. I have been doing on Brahma Murta. Brahma Murta is very good because nature is very calm. They say the time between four or in this country, I don't know, but in India it is between three to six. They say people who really want to achieve something, 
try to do something at brahma murta some meditation or whenever you get up sometimes some people don't get sleep there's no harm in that if they don't keep worrying and if they don't take sleeping tablets they can as well do japa silently some for some people it japa puts them to sleep that is not a good idea but anyway it is better than um, having worries and anxious thoughts so it can be done yes so i'll take your leave now om shanti 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 hari hi om tat sat shri ram krishna arpa namastu so we'll meet tomorrow at 5:30 as usual for the gospel class